Aircraft have a wide variety of sensor capabilities. An active sonar may be lowered on a cable from a hovering helicopter. It is capable of detecting submarines a few miles away. A limited passive sonar ability exists at the active sonar frequency. Counter detection is at least twice the detection range. Aircraft may also drop sonobuoys that can be either passive or active. Active sonobuoys provide range information to the operator in the aircraft. Counter detection is at least twice the detection range. Passive low-far sonobuoys provide frequency versus time displays that can classify and identify a submarine much as passive sonar does. DIFAR sonobuoys have the same capability, plus they can provide a bearing to the noise source. Depending on the aircraft type, up to eight DIFAR or 16 LOFAR sonobuoys may be simultaneously monitored by one aircraft. Some aircraft have the ability to relay sonobuoy information to a suitably equipped surface ship for remote monitoring. There is a wide diversity in this capability among the various aircraft types, so current equipment should be verified to determine its exact capability. Aircraft also provide a good platform for radar, ESM, and visual detection. They can adjust altitude and track to optimize detection without letting the enemy know where the protected force is located. Magnetic anomaly detection MAD is an ASW sensor unique to aircraft. It measures the disturbance in the normal Earth's magnetic field caused by large metal objects, such as submarines. It is a very short-range sensor, effective at a maximum of 1,000 to 2,000 feet. Usually, it is used to localize and verify a contact made by another type of sensor. However, it is being used more frequently as a search sensor. MAD contacts occur at such short range that torpedoes may be dropped from the aircraft to home on the submarine without any other data required. A forward-looking infrared detector, or FLIR, is a non-detectable sensor used to locate sources of heat at short range. It can detect objects that might not otherwise be detected. For example, a periscope that escaped visual detection might be seen on FLIR up to a few miles away. The effectiveness of FLIR is degraded by moisture in the air. Counter detection is not possible because the system does not radiate. Now that you've seen some of the platforms and sensors available for ASW operations, Let's take a look at why they are coordinated to protect friendly forces. Here is a task force with the high value unit near the center. Each square is 25 miles on a side. In the van of the force are two submerged nuclear submarines and a frigate. Each employs a passive towed array. The frigate is equipped with a LAMPS helicopter. All three ships conduct a passive sonar search within their sectors. They sprint to maintain force speed of advance and drift to permit effective passive sonar search. The SSNs are positioned on each bow of the frigate to provide mutual protection and enhance acoustic communications. Also, since each towed array searches best in the area perpendicular to it, adjacent units should not be stationed a beam or mutual interference may occur. The frigate not only has its own passive sonar search going, but acts as a communications link with the two SSNs. In addition, it provides the LAMPS helicopters to coordinate with the subs when necessary. To protect the flanks of the force, sonobuoy barriers are monitored by fixed-wing aircraft. They are placed so that ship noise does not interfere with detection. This offset distance will vary and should be tested at sea. In addition, the sonobuoy barrier and adjacent ships should be positioned so that a penetrating enemy submarine may be detected, localized, and attacked prior to reaching a position from which he may launch his weapons at the high-value units. 
Additional sauna buoys are added as the force advances, so the barrier is maintained. The position of the barrier permits the monitoring aircraft to cooperate in the prosecution of any contacts generated by the frigate or submarines in the van. Two surface ships are stationed inboard of each flank sauna buoy field and conduct a passive search. They are free to move within their sectors and to respond to any alert generated by the flank sauna buoy barrier. On the other hand, if the passive capability of the surface ships provides a good probability of detecting a submarine penetrating the flank, the sauna buoy barrier would very likely not be positioned. The aircraft task would then be changed to one of responding to contacts generated by the surface ships and submarines. This aircraft utilization reduces sauna buoy expenditure and makes good use of the aircraft's great mobility and the surface ships and submarines long-range passive capability. Helicopters with dipping sonar are available to assist any sector of the formation with localization and attack of submarine contacts. Considering the entire formation, we have distributed surface ship and submarine passive sensors around the periphery of the force. These passive sensors are at sufficient range to provide initial contact in time for aircraft to eliminate the submarine threat at long ranges from the force. While waiting for initial contact to be provided by surface ships and submarines, the aircraft provide protection in depth by also conducting a search for the enemy submarine with their varied sensor suits. Submarines are placed on the expected force track or in other high threat sectors to maximize their superior detection capability. Surface ships use their good command and control facilities to tie the whole ASW picture together and to interlock ASW with other maritime warfare specialties. Coordinated ASW uses the best features of each ASW unit to enhance a force's overall capability. Individual unit limitations are minimized or eliminated by another unit's capability. The key to ASW is early detection followed by rapid attack.